In this video, I'm gonna show you guys how to connect your Android smartphone to your arcade cabinet so you can use the control deck to play some of your mobile app games. This is Steve from Nostalgia, and let's get started. All right guys, so we are just gonna jump right on into it. So the first thing that we're gonna need to do is pair our Android smartphone over Bluetooth with our arcade cabinet. Now this is actually really easy to do, and if you guys remember, with firmware 4.0, when that was released, we got public Bluetooth. So what we need to do is we need to navigate over to our settings section, and as you can see here, we have two different Bluetooth sections. We've got Bluetooth host and Bluetooth device. We don't need to use the Bluetooth host. What we actually need to do is we need to make sure that our arcade cabinet is set to Bluetooth device. So we're gonna go ahead and click on the Bluetooth device button, and you can see the very first line that we can see here underneath Bluetooth device. It says system currently running and then it says Bluetooth host. What we need to do is we need to change that to Bluetooth device. So along the bottom, you've got four options. You've got cancel, select host, apply and discoverable. We're going to hover over select host. We're going to press the A button to toggle it to select device. And then we just need to go over to the right and we need to hit apply. And as you can see, now it says system currently running as a Bluetooth device on the top. That's not all that we need to do in order to make it so that way our Android phone can actually see the arcade cabinet control deck. We need to make sure that we navigate over to the farthest right hand button called discoverable and we need to select that. When we select that, we're actually going to be given three minutes worth of time when the device is actually going to be visible to anybody who's trying to connect to it. So that's a very important step. As you can see on screen, we now have this Bluetooth discoverable countdown and it's just gonna go down from 180 seconds down to zero. Now is when we're going to switch over to our phone and connect in via Bluetooth. So just so you guys know, I am using a Samsung Galaxy S10. So this may be different depending on which version of Android you're running, but essentially what you wanna do is get to the Bluetooth settings. Once we're there, we're just gonna wait until we can see the HA8800 device become available and we just need to click on it. It's gonna begin the pairing process, and towards the bottom of the screen, I'm gonna have a request come up saying, hey, do you want to actually pair with this device? And of course, I'm gonna hit OK. And that's pretty much it. Once that's done, you're connected. So as you can see, when I scroll down and I pull up my Bluetooth settings again, you can see that I'm connected to the HA8800 control deck. And right away, as soon as we get back into our main menus, you can see that as soon as you start moving the control stick around, you're actually able to take control of your phone. You can select things right out of the gate. So the next thing that we need to do is we need to get the image from our phone mirrored onto our arcade cabinet. And the easiest way to do it is to purchase one of these cables. One end is a USB-C and the other end is an HDMI. And it's really simple. You pop the USB-C into your phone and you plug the HDMI into one of the two available HDMI ports on the control panel. Then you switch to that video input and that's all you need to do. Now again, depending on what device you're using, it might be slightly different but it is relatively simple and you should be able to do it. The major benefit of using one of these cables is that you don't get the typical input lag that you would with a software. So definitely I recommend them and I'll leave a link in the description down below for something that you guys can use. Now I'm gonna show you guys a few different ways that you can use this control board with your phone. So one, you can use it for any app in the app store that is compatible with a gamepad. Not all games are, so just be aware that it's not gonna work with everything, but there are a ton of games that you could use it with. I'm gonna show you guys an example of that with Sonic 1. If you're not interested in using this for specific game apps or mobile apps, you can 100% use this for different emulators. So what I've got on here is I'm gonna show you a few different options. The first one I'm gonna show you is RetroArch. So we're gonna go ahead and get that loaded up. And it's important to note that with all of the emulators, you're going to need to map your buttons. So we're gonna go ahead and map our controls. So we're just gonna go ahead and launch a game. In this case, I'm gonna launch Mighty Morphin Power Rangers for the Super Nintendo. 
Once the game has started to load, you'll notice that there is a RetroArch button in the center top position of the screen. We're going to go ahead and press that RetroArch button. Then we're going to go to our settings section, then we're going to go down to our port 1 binds, and we're going to configure this for this port. What this is going to allow us to do is actually go through each button and assign the buttons to our control cabinet. Now it's important that when you click on a button, you actually have to hold that button down for about three seconds for it to properly map. And it does indicate that on the screen. Once we're finished with our port one binds, we need to scroll up and we need to select the hot key binds. Hot keys are what's going to allow us to enter back into this menu. And the reason we want to do that is because after we're done this, we're going to go ahead and disable the on screen button layout. So that way you can just see the game. We're going to select the menu toggle gamepad combo. And from in there, we're given lots of different options in terms of how we want to be able to access our menu. I personally like using just the start and select buttons. So that's what I'm going to choose. Now we're going to let our game run just to a point where we can actually test to make sure all of our buttons are working properly. And now that they are, what we're going to go ahead and do is we're going to hit start and select to open up our RetroArch menu. We're going to scroll down to on screen overlays and we're going to turn off display overlay. And once we do that, you'll notice there's no longer any controls visible on the actual screen and you're going to be able to play it without anything in the way. And that's pretty much it for RetroArch. At this point, you can play whatever games you want that are able to be run off of your device. So depending on how powerful your device is, that's going to dictate what types of games you're going to be able to play. Now, even basic phones should be able to do things like Game Boy, Game Boy Advanced, Super Nintendo, Nintendo, Genesis, those types of consoles, the 8 and 16-bit era consoles. Uh, if you're looking at some of the more higher end uh, consoles, PlayStation, Nintendo 64, or getting into some of the higher end consoles like Dreamcast, GameCube, and Nintendo Wii, you're going to want a much more powerful device, and I definitely recommend using standalone emulators. So the next thing I'm going to show you guys is some PlayStation 1 games running on this cabinet and it runs really, really well. Again, the first thing that we need to do is we need to go into our input settings and we need to map our player one controls. This is relatively simple. You just have to select the item and then map it and you go all the way down. Now, in my case, I did not map an L2 and an R2 button because in the games that I'm going to be playing on the cabinet, you're not going to really need them. So once that's all said and done, we're going to go ahead and pull a game up. And in this case, I'm just going to load up some Castlevania Symphony of the Night. And just like with RetroArch, we're going to need to go into the settings and turn off the controller overlay. And now, as you guys can see, there is nothing left on the screen other than the game itself. Die, monster! You don't belong in this world! It was not by my hand that I'm once again given flesh. I was called- And the last things that I'm going to show you guys is GameCube and Nintendo Wii running on your arcade cabinet with the control stick. Now, keep in mind that specifically for those games, you're going to need to find games that are compatible with either just the D-pad or just the analog or whatever it is, depending on how you map your controls. But obviously, you're not going to be able to play any uh, GameCube game, because some games do require both a D-pad and an analog stick. So keep that in mind, don't get too excited about it. Additionally, you're going to need a pretty powerful phone. So like I said, I'm using the Samsung Galaxy S10. It is plenty powerful enough to handle GameCube and Wii emulation, but not every device is. So just like with all our other emulators, we need to map our controls. And now that I've done that, the game that I'm going to go ahead and show you guys is actually Soul Calibur. We're going to get that up and running. Shadow moves with stealth. I'm through with words. Battle one, fight. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> 
And as you guys can see, it actually runs and plays really, really well. Now, obviously my phone is capable of emulating it, but the controls do feel really good. And then I am gonna show you guys that it is compatible with the Wii as well. So we're gonna map our Wii controls, and then we're just gonna throw on some new Super Mario Bros. Wii. Let's play. And as you can see, we are now controlling Mario and everything is good that way. But that's pretty much it for this video, guys. Thank you so very much for watching. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Leave a comment in the comment section below. Let me know what you guys ended up doing with this. But that's all I've got, and I will talk to you guys again real soon.